You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh all week long. Those balls have gotten you in trouble, though. Oh, you yeah. They picked us because we're horny. Yeah. Right. And that's your chronic state. That's what you've always said. <laughs> My life has changed so much that it's almost like a completely different life. From the latest news on The Real Housewives. I'm so happy to be here and engage with you. Deep dives into celebrity legal scandals and unfiltered convos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Welcome on in, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, if you went to Coachella, I feel sorry for you. I did not go to Coachella. I had no interest in going to Coachella. But I mean, I had a lot of friends that went and they looked like they had a lot of fun. Uh, last week, I what did I do? I didn't do much over the weekend. My last exciting night was when I went to the the launch party for Erica Jane when she announced her Vegas residency. Got my tickets. I'm excited. Uh, so I will I will see you guys there. If you're coming, let me know so I can see you there in Vegas. I'm doing opening weekend, so I will be in Vegas. I haven't been to Vegas in a minute, honey. I'm excited for it. Uh, this week on the podcast, I have on uh, Chef Stuart O'Keefe. He's Jeff Lewis's hunky Irish boyfriend. He also co-authored the Spill It, Cook It, Throw It cookbook with Amy Phillips, which is Bravo and Housewives inspired. He did a cooking show at like Bravo last year. So he comes on the pod. He gives me some tea. We talk about the Heather and Megan drama. And we talk about his relationship with Jeff Lewis. We talk about Housewives. We talk about Jersey. We talk about uh, Vanderpump. We talk, we covered a lot. So stay tuned. That'll air this Wednesday. I will be in Philly. So I'm not doing any YouTube live streams, which is kind of a bummer. But maybe I'll sneak in like an Instagram live stream. So you can follow at Just Plain Zach. And hopefully that'll happen at some point. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry we won't be live streaming the show this Thursday, but I hope you get your tickets. I believe we have just like a very few handful of tickets left for the live show this Thursday night at City Winery in Philly with the Bra Bros and Dorinda Medley. We also have Danny Murphy from Page Six who's going to be doing some hot topics with us on stage. So you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be fun. Come on out, guys. City Winery, Philadelphia. April 27th, this Thursday, I will see you there. If you are on the VIP list, then you can come and meet me and the Brav Bros at 5 p.m. for our VIP meet and greet. You get early check-in, you get uh, you get seated early, and you get to do the meet and greet. We're going to be taking photos and hanging with you guys. So that's just a reference for anybody that bought tickets to the Philly show. The meet and greet is happening at 5 p.m. from 5 to 6, and then Doors will open to the general public at 6, and the show will kick off at 7.30. So stay tuned. It's going to be fun. I will see you there. We're going to take lots of pics. I still have to, like, go shop and get an outfit and oh, get my hair done. It's going to be a, it's going to be a week. It's going to be a couple days. But all right. I love you guys. Uh, shall we dive into this week's tea? So I got some inside scoop on the Jersey reunion. Um, I got some tea on Miami. We got a new. Raquel and Sandoval update and then some info on the Real Houses of Beverly Hills Homeless Not Toothless Gala that taped over the weekend as well. So without further ado, shall we dive on in? Let's do it, baby. Oh, um, okay, so inside the Real Housewives of New Jersey reunion, it filmed last week. I'm hearing that it was wild. Andy Cohen teased a couple of bits on his Instagram account. Melissa seemed to have been coming with some receipts, and it started off fairly tame, but then the husbands came out, and things got feisty, and ooh, vey. So Page Six is reporting that Teresa was completely unhinged and totally out of control. She was cursing up a storm. She apparently called Margaret an effing whore, and even Andy was getting frustrated with Teresa at multiple moments throughout the reunion. So it sounds like Teresa really is coming hard and does not give an F. How many Fs does she give? Zero, zero, none, not one. I think she also knows that she's kind of done with the show. I think she's hoping that they give her a spinoff. It depends on how her her and Louie, their wedding special does that I think will ultimately determine the ratings if they're good enough to hold and sustain a spinoff show. I actually think that's probably what's best for her is she goes and does her own spinoff with her daughters and with Louie. I think that's going to be juicy because the producers are probably going to pry into her relationship more now that she won't have to share the screen with so many other women. And they're going to have to dive into her family life and her relationship because her relationships with the other women would no longer become prevalent if it is a spinoff. 
So I think that that would be smart for her. I think maybe we keep Melissa on New Jersey and we focus it more on these other women. We have Jen Fessler, who I think is really good at pushing the storylines forward. We have um, uh, Rachel Fuda. We have Danielle Cabral. I think they're the future of Jersey. They bring Jersey. They bring youth. They kind of keep things fresh. So I think that's kind of where we go moving forward. But according to All About the Tea, Joe Gorga gets uh, pisses off Dolores because he brings up an alleged falling out between Frankie Jr. and Louie. Apparently, Dolores is not happy about that, so she shuts that down immediately. Joe Gorga also claims that Gia called him and told him to leave Melissa. Gia is very strongly denying it. She says that she swears on her no-no, that that is a no-no, and she did no, no, not say that. And she claims that she called him, but she called him to beg him to come to the wedding. So these are two very different accounts of what they believe happened. Gia was not at the reunion. I believe she was at Coachella, but this apparently comes up in the finale. And so they address it at the reunion. But apparently Jacqueline Larita also gets brought up into things um, in relation to her reunion with Teresa in Vegas. Remember, we saw Jacqueline, Teresa, and Louie, and Chris. They were all hanging out together in Vegas where Jacqueline lives. Now she's moving to the OC. I'm hoping she comes out to our show on June 15th because I'm doing my birthday show, my big Dirty 30 birthday show on June 15th at the Bourbon Room with Lala Ken and some other Bravo stars. I invited Jacqueline. That's when she's supposed to be moving to California. So I'm hoping scheduling-wise her and Chris can still make it because I think that would be that would be fun. Um, but so... Apparently, this gets revealed at the reunion that she claims that Joe Judice's former business partner and Joe Gorga were close. And I guess there was some sort of relation to the indictment because the former business partner is, I believe, the one that flipped on Joe and how this all kind of came down and was a house of cards. And Joe Gorga apparently has kept in touch with him and has continued to talk to him. Joe Gorga didn't have any involvement with the indictment, just that he was friendly with the ex-business partner that sued Joe Judice. And Kim D says that Joe's best friend said that he had his secretary call the IRS. Um, I think Kim D talked to the secretary as well, but she doesn't work for him anymore. Teresa and Joe were already being investigated when they interviewed Joe's ex-business partner. He wasn't going to talk to them unless Joe didn't pay him the money he owed. Joe wouldn't pay him, so the ex-partner started talking. Joe Gorga was friendly with the ex-partner. Separately, Kim D said Joe had a girl he worked with, a secretary or an assistant that called the IRS to report Joe for not paying his taxes. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so it seems like Joe had an assistant or a secretary that tipped off the IRS. Um, but the lawsuit with the business partner, that's, I guess, I don't know. I guess somehow they came onto somebody's radar. Emily D. Baker said that as well. She said usually when there are issues like this or when indictments come up or there are tax fraud issues or the IRS issues, that usually it's not because they just happen to file through and decide to pick you, but usually it's because somebody reported you. Somebody decided to tip them off and said, hey, you should look into this person. And that's usually what causes, you know, things to kind of build up. And that's when they start to do some investigations. And so it seems like there's some sort of link to um, Joe Gorga, which is interesting. So it seems like it, it may have been like a tipping, like the card started or the dominoes started to fall and then eventually the indictment began. Interesting. Do we believe this? Do we really think that Joe Gorga would have his assistant like tip off the IRS that Joe isn't paying his taxes? I mean, I don't know. Like what would be the benefit of that? Because like wouldn't you also be hurting your sister in the process unless he wanted to hurt his sister because they were not on good terms at that point? I don't know. I mean, this is a wild accusation. It also comes from Kim D. I know Kim D tends to have a lot of dirt on people, but I also question the validity of the dirt that she has on people. I don't know. That's crazy. Apparently, this comes up at the reunion, though, because Jacqueline told this to Teresa, and so I guess she brings it up. And if, this, if that's the case, then I don't think that there's really much mending for Teresa and Joe after all of this. Also, I guess a lot of the house husbands come hard at Louie and Frank was the one that came at him the hardest, which I think would make sense if there really was a falling out with Frankie Jr. Then it would make sense why Frank Sr. would be upset with Louie and would come at him so hard. But I find it interesting that we're also hearing that 
Dolores was shutting it down because she didn't want to go there. Maybe she didn't want to go there because she didn't want Frankie being brought up into it. But I feel like wouldn't you be upset with Teresa and Louie if there really was a falling out? And like, wouldn't that kind of be a line drawn in the sand? Dolores uh, and Polly went out to dinner with Teresa and Louie. And I think Danielle and Nate Cabral were also there at the dinner with them. I didn't see Jennifer Aiden tagged or Bill Aiden tagged in that. But it seems like Dolores and Teresa and Louis seem to be okay. So I'm curious how much truth there is to this falling out with Frankie Jr. and why Frank Catania would be coming at Louis so hard and why Joe would be throwing out an accusation like this. Seems like there's a lot of they said, they said, he said, she said, he said, he said, she said, she said. There's a lot of I said this, no, I didn't. This is what's happening. No, it's not. Teresa reveals that she didn't invite Melissa's mom to the wedding because the mom was liking negative tweets about her. And Melissa's like, well, my mom likes a lot of stuff about the show on social media. I don't get it personal. So, which, I mean, listen, I get that maybe Donna and Melissa's mom wasn't the nicest to Teresa or maybe wasn't the most embracing. And maybe in defense of her daughter was kind of upset with Teresa on several occasions. I would get that. I think that that's natural. I would hope my mother would get upset if I were put in a situation like that and somebody were being awful towards me and bringing up stripper gate rumors. I get that. I do think, however, like I understand Teresa not wanting Donna at the wedding. I totally understand why. And I get why she just didn't want to do it. But I also think Teresa's not dumb. And I think Teresa knew that if she did this, it would draw a line in the sand and it was going to upset Melissa and Joe and why she decided to move forward, like not inviting Melissa into the wedding. That was obviously going to be an issue. We foresaw that this was going to be an issue. So you either avoid the issue by having Melissa Melissa be in the wedding, whether it's to your liking or not, because at the end of the day, weddings sadly aren't about the actual couple getting married. They're about everybody else involved, and that's just the unfortunate thing about weddings. It's a ceremony, but everybody else makes it about themselves. And so in this case, I think – Put Melissa in the wedding, put Joe in the wedding, put the kids in the wedding just to make peace, just to make nice. Because that's what Teresa says, right? She always wants to just make peace. She always wants to make it nice. I understand her not wanting to, but I think if she really doesn't want the drama and she really just wants everything to be fine, then don't do stuff like this because this is not going to make things fine. This is not going to make things better. I understand Teresa's reasoning. I want to be very clear. I get where Teresa is coming from. However, I don't get her being so shocked that things shook out the way that they did because of her own actions. I think she could have avoided that. I think she knew that Donna not being invited would have been an issue. And I think she should have just invited Donna whether she wanted her to be there or not. She didn't have to interact with Donna. I mean, think about it. How many times do people have to invite people that they don't want to invite to their wedding and they have to invite them by obligation for some other reason, but it keeps the peace and it keeps there from being drama, right? Hey, Teresa. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see the, the her wedding special to Louie and see how that all unfolds. But there's apparently no talk of the BravoCon feud. Remember at uh, BravoCon, it was, what was it, Friday night? There was some beef between Jennifer Aiden and the Gorgas and she threw a drink at them and they called her names and it was a whole thing and... They got into a fight and Bravo was like pissed about that. Apparently that doesn't come up. That doesn't get addressed at all. The whole reunion sounds wild and it doesn't sound like there was much resolution at all. But I don't know. What do you think? How are you feeling about this reunion? Are you looking forward to it? I know I'm looking forward to it. I feel like it's going to be last reunion was wild. And I feel like this one's probably going to be similar. I think we only have what about four or five episodes left in the season. So the season's coming to a close. We're coming back from what is it? coming back from Ireland and we shall see. We will discuss this week's uh, episode of Real Houses in New Jersey with the Brav Bros live on Thursday night in Philly. You can get your tickets at nofilterlive.com. And we're also going to have a very special interview live on stage with Dorinda Medley. The show is not being live streamed. So the only way to catch it is to come to the show in Philly at City Winery, April 27th. That's this Thursday. Get your tickets at nofilterlive.com. Okay, Real Housewives, the Real Housewives of Miami. Miami's on, 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 on fire. So they started taping the new season. They're taping season six, and Just Spotted Out was Alexia and Adriana. They were spotted filming together, working through some issues. So all the ladies are said to return. I think they're both smart, and I think they know that filming together is going to 
be good for the sake of the show because they're both good for the show. And I think they like the show enough to know when they have to play their role and have to try to film and try to make nice. And hopefully they will be able to find some resolution. I imagine it's not going to be very easy and it's going to take a minute, but I assume eventually throughout the season, they'll find a way to come back to each other and be better and closer than ever. I think if anything, it probably will bring them closer than ever. And it'd be a nice way for them to rebuild their friendship. I think Adriana is going to have a harder time with Marisol because it really seems like Marisol is done with her and Marisol wants nothing to do with her. But I think there have been moments of endearment and there have been like nice moments between Alexia and Adriana that I think maybe repairing her relationship with Marisol will likely be through repairing her relationship with Alexia. So we'll see how it all shakes out. All the ladies are back for the new season. I don't know if they have any newbies. I heard that they were maybe trying to cast like one or two newbies. So we'll see what Miami brings. But I mean, it's a good cast. We have a good solid lineup. We have some good friends of Marisol's a good friend of Adriana's a good friend of. Uh, I almost said Gertie. Um, I think Gertie might be demoted to a friend of. Probably not. But I think, you know, I want to see more of her rich story life. I love the businesswoman aspect of her. Her family scenes just don't really do it for me. Um. Obviously, Lisa's going to continue to play out her divorce and being single and dating again. Um, Julia, I don't know how much of the cancer stuff they're going to talk about now that Martinez beat the cancer. So maybe about how the relationship is better. Dr. Nicole is going to be talking about, you know, it, she didn't get married, yet, right? It, this is the journey to the wedding. So we'll see her finally get married now that she had her engagement party. I think it's going to be a good season of Miami. I hope there is some new blood. I hope whoever it is comes to kind of shake things up and is a bit of a lightning rod. We need a Joanna Krupa. That's what we need. Someone that was like Joanna Krupa that comes in and kind of just gives a a breath of fresh air into into Miami the same way we did it with the first three seasons, right? Joanna came in and really kind of shook things up and then it was great. So I'm here for, for maybe not Joanna, didn't she just break up or get a divorce or something? Hopefully that gives her an opportunity to move to, to move back to Miami, to move back to the States and ideally Miami because Joanna Krupa was hot and she was great and she was a perfect housewife. I liked her in Miami. Miami's on, 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 on fire. Okay, Brittany Cartwright is revealing that she caught Sandoval, Tom Sandoval at Raquel's apartment. So for their new Peacock Vanderpump Rules uh after show watch party. I'm not really sure what it's considered where it's Brittany and Jackson. They're going and watching episodes of Vanderpump Rules and kind of providing commentary on that. Kind of like when Bravo did the people's couch or um, there's pillow talk on TLC. So Brittany remembers that there was this time when she was supposed to pick up Raquel because they were going to attend this white Fox party with Sheena. And Sheena's like, Hey, do you mind picking up Raquel? And then Brittany's like, yeah, sure. I'll pick her up. Let me get some, I'll get her some beer cheese. And then she went to go pick up Raquel and she went to her apartment. And surprisingly, Sandoval was there at her apartment and he ended up crashing this event with them. And she was like, that's really weird. She didn't think much of it at the time, but she did kind of think it was kind of strange. Like why is Sandoval here? Like with just Raquel and why is he coming to this event? I didn't even know he was coming to this event. Like this is very strange. Um, But she didn't think too much of it. But I think a lot of people are doing that now, looking at these like strange moments that they didn't really give much thought to. And then now they're like looking back and be like, oh, the signs were there. All the red flags were there in our face. And then Jax ends up dragging Sandoval for investing so much money into Schwartz and Sandys. And he thinks that it's kind of a waste because he doesn't think that Schwartz and Sandys is even much of a priority for Tom Sandoval, which it doesn't appear to be a priority for him because he stepped down and he's going on tour. And it's just like with his band, Tom Sandoval and the most extras. And Jax brings up the fact that like he took out a loan against his house and that his mom ended up dipping into her retirement savings. And I think she gave him what, like $250,000, you know, what Louis lost with the pizza ovens. So Jax doesn't seem to think that Sandoval will be able to recover from this. Um, I don't even know if I think that Sandoval is going to recover from this because like, He's not going to make up his money with Tom Sandoval and the most extras. And I don't know how much life he's got left on Vanderpump Rules. And like, who knows how much he has saved up for a rainy day. So I think Jax actually actually may have some truth to it, being that Jax has been there, right? Where he's been at the center of a scandal and he's no longer on the show. And he kind of had to figure things out with him and Brittany. And they had a baby and they had a house and they had to figure it out. But they ultimately made it work. 
But I think he's like, listen, Sandoval didn't prepare because he thought that Schwartz and Sandys and Vanderpump Rules was going to cover him for another couple years, and it doesn't appear to be the case. So, yikes. Jax dragged him, which Jax loves to do these days. <laughs> Okay, let's talk Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, that's where I want to be. Gimme, gimme, uh, gimme, gimme. Uh. So they filmed at the Homeless Not Toothless Gala over the weekend. Dorit hosted a gala for Homeless Not Toothless, the foundation with Dr. Jay Grossman. And apparently there was some drama with the newbie and Marie, I guess, People overheard them fighting regarding or having a discussion, a heated discussion regarding some of Anne Marie's political viewpoints that the other ladies didn't really seem to agree with. So a couple of them shared words with her, although Kyle did go on her Instagram and she insisted on Instagram that the ladies were on their best behavior, all in support of Homeless Not Toothless. And she's probably going to continue to botch the name in the future, but she's like, I'm trying to make sure it's Homeless Not Toothless, Not Toothless, Not Homeless. Homeless, not toothless. And not homeless and toothless because they're homeless, but they're not toothless. So Kyle's like, I got it. And I will hopefully continue to get it right. She also says that Dr. Jay Grossman clarifies why he decided to call it homeless, not toothless. Very curious as to what his his reasoning and rationale is going to be to defend the name. I can't wait to watch that play out. Erica also recently chatted with Evan Real at page six, where she said that Garcelle is the most composed this season because he asked her, he's like, you know, you are the pretty mess. So who do you think is the prettiest and who do you think is the messiest? Oof, what is that? Um, and so she said that she thinks that Garcelle is the prettiest because she's the most composed this season because she always like carries herself very well and then she says that the messiest though she says there's some mess between Kyle Richards and Seth and Strack and that they kind of get into a little beef and then she also claims that Denise Richards tried to get messy with her but she's like she tried she tried to get messy but it doesn't sound like Denise was very successful and from what I've heard Denise got a little sloppy she got a little litty city a little too litty city and got a little sloppy with it so sounds like maybe she tries to come in it but maybe isn't able to hold her composure because she gets a little too lit which we loved when she was there <laughs> remember her confessionals in the um remember she had that like cheetah print top and like that weird like neon pink light in the back and she was just like Aah. she was just like slouching in her chair filming her at home confessionals because that was the year they had to self-tape their confessionals. And she was just like living life. Even that reunion, she was just like, somebody hand me a cheeseburger. Give me a hot dog. Give me a Dodger dog. Give me a Polish dog from Costco, please, so I can put my jeans back on. Denise is so not glam. Like, she's just not. And you kind of got to respect it and you kind of got to love her for it. But she's just, like, she's just Denise. You would think, like, Denise Richards would be glam and luxe and Hollywood. And she's just, she's really not. She really isn't, but I'm excited. I got my tickets to go see Erica Jane. Bet it all on Blonde, the Vegas residency live. I'm coming to Las Vegas opening weekend. I cannot wait. We booked a table, and I it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a blast. I can't wait to pat the puss, baby. And you guys can come and see me live in Philly this Thursday at City Winery with Dorinda Medley and the Brav Bros. We've also got Danny Murphy that's going to be, he's from page six. He's going to be doing some hot topics with us on stage. We're going to be doing some hot takes. So stay tuned for that. This Thursday, April 27th at City Winery in Philly. I believe we've got a couple, a very few handful of tickets left. Um that you can grab at nofilterlive.com or you can come out to my very special 30th birthday show with Lala Kent at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood. It's going to be a blast. We've got so many other Bravo lebs and stars that'll be in attendance as well. So you're not going to want to miss it. June 15th at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood or April 27th in Philly with Dorinda Medley. There may be another show being announced soon, so stay tuned. But I mean, if you want to meet Dorinda or you want to meet Lala, those are the only shows you're going to get to meet them at. So hopefully you get to you get a chance to come on out and make it. Get your tickets at nofilterlive.com. That's nofilterlive.com. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me this week on No Filter with Zach Peter. As a reminder, there's not going to be a book club because I'm going to be I'm going to be flying to Philly, and we're not going to have our regular Thursday night live because I'm going to be like live in person at City Winery on Thursday night. So. 
no live streams this week. I'll try to do an Instagram live if I can, but you can keep up with me and all the behind the scenes adventures from my trip to Philly and then New York and then New Jersey this week. Um, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach or keep up with the latest tea on the podcast at No Filter with Zach. You can catch new episodes of No Filter with Zach Peter every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I guess we're not going to have a Friday episode because we're not going to tape live on Thursday. So, sorry guys, I guess we're only getting two, we're only putting two episodes out of the podcast this week, Monday and Wednesday, and then we'll get back onto our regular schedule next week. But I love you guys, I appreciate you guys, I hope I get to see you in Philly at City Winery this Thursday, and yeah, big announcements coming. Next month is also going to be a big month, just before our show at the Bourbon Room June 15th with Lala Kent. It's going to be good gonna be a lot of fun all right guys i love you i appreciate you sky is also now on instagram too if you want to follow him you can follow at just plain sky s-k-y just plain sky all right i love you guys i appreciate you i will see you i will see you all around and about on the east coast this week love you mean it bye